By siding with Democrats today on the debt ceiling, President Trump has again complicated an already packed legislative agenda for Republican leaders in Congress. John Yang brings us up to speed. Congress got right down to business this morning, overwhelmingly approving a $7.9 billion first round of Hurricane Harvey relief with only three votes against it. As one of the nation's greatest natural disasters continues to unfold before our eyes, this Congress must ensure that our federal government is able to meet the short and long-term needs of disaster victims. We have a lot to discuss. But the path forward for Harvey aid may have been complicated by a deal President Trump made at the White House with Democratic leaders Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi. Mr. Trump agreed to their proposal to tie the relief funds to funding the government and increasing the nation's borrowing limit to avoid default until December 15th. But that could create a fiscal showdown just before Christmas and increase the Democrats' leverage. Flying to North Dakota aboard Air Force One, Mr. Trump praised the agreement. We uh, essentially came to an, a, a deal, and I think the deal will be very good. We had a very, very cordial uh, and professional meeting, so we all very much agree. Not everybody. Officials said objections came from Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, and House Speaker Paul Ryan. They wanted a longer-term fix on the debt ceiling through next year's midterm elections. An hour before the Oval Office meeting, Ryan had flatly rejected the Democrats' idea. I think that's ridiculous and disgraceful that they want to pl play politics with the debt ceiling at this moment when we have fellow citizens in need to respond to these hurricanes so that we do not strand them. Afterward, McConnell pointedly excluded himself from the agreement. The president and the Senate and House Democratic leadership agreed to a three-month uh, continuing resolution and a debt ceiling into December. It threatens a revolt from conservative Republicans. Even moderate Republican Senator Ben Sass of Nebraska tweeted, the Pelosi-Schumer-Trump deal is bad. <laughs> Meanwhile, a Senate committee began bipartisan hearings on another issue that divides Republicans. This hearing is about taking one small step, a small step on a big issue which has been locked in partisan stalemate for seven years, health insurance. This afternoon in North Dakota, Mr. Trump addressed another item he wants Congress to tackle, taxes. I had a great bipartisan meeting with Democrat and Republican leaders in Congress, and I'm committed to working with both parties to deliver for our wonderful, wonderful citizens. Mr. Trump reached we across the plan. aisle on taxes. Thank you, Senator. Taking right. Democratic North Dakota Senator Heidi camp along on Air Force One. But after this morning, it may be his own party he has to worry about. We take a look at the political road ahead on Capitol Hill with Erica Warner, the congressional correspondent for the Associated Press, who joins us from the Capitol. Erica, welcome back. Thank so, you. What are you hearing from Republicans up there about uh, what happened at the White House this morning? Well, it's just amazement. I mean, they got completely rolled by the president of their own party and were almost speechless in the aftermath. Paul Ryan, in fact, literally was speechless. There was no statement from him whatsoever. Mitch McConnell, as the audio you were playing earlier indicated, making clear, just admitting outright that Trump had sided with the Democrats on this. So it's certainly not the outcome they wanted or expected from this meeting. And then the next thing that happens is that Trump flies Heidi Heitkamp, who's a Democratic senator, in a vulnerable re-election race, you know, to North Dakota with him. So Democrats are getting everything they could ask for from this president today, and Republicans are getting nothing. So when they add the debt ceiling and the uh, short-term funding, funding, the continuing resolution to the um, Harvey aid in the Senate, and it goes back to the House, what's going to happen there? Well, I think that despite, again, the complaints that we're hearing from conservatives, all the Democrats are on board. And Paul Ryan, you know, is on this deal, much as he may not like it. So the expectation is that it will pass. Does this complicate things for the Republicans moving moving forward on the so on on other issues? Well, definitely. I mean, it's just curious because one of the explanations coming out of the White House for why they cut this deal is that they wanted to clear the decks 
for tax reform so that the next period of time can be devoted to that number one agenda item for the president. But there is going to be so much ill will coming out of this deal among Republicans and then this looming deadline, which is now such a huge thing in December. It makes tax reform all the harder. So that logic doesn't really compute for a lot of Republicans up here. Erica Warner in Capitol Hill on a month, an interesting month that just got a little more interesting. Very. Thanks a lot. Thank you.